Hey everybody, it's ASIC Eric again, back on the Camaro. Uh, during the week, uh, I sprayed the top of the dash here um, with that uh, SEM Hot Rod Black. Ooh, that looks nice. I just love this black on red. Man, that looks sick. Um, this turned out to be a complete nightmare um, the first time I did it. Um, I sprayed the first coat on and had all these chunks of crap and paint and stuff in it. It just looked awful. And uh, so I tried to let it dry for an hour or so and then tried to sand it down and just, you know, just... You know, this stuff takes forever to dry, so... Complete disaster, so I had to sand it all off and do it again. Um, and then realized my issue, um, as I was looking at it, was pressure again. Um, I'm not used to this air cap I have on... Uh, my GTI Pro, Pro Lite, um, it's the HV25, so it's an HVLP hybrid cap, and it needs more pressure than an HVLP. Um, so I'm used to my FLG4, I spray stuff at uh, 22 PSI, so that's what I had done when I did that first code, and like I said, it just didn't work worth a crap. Um, and you can see, anyway, so I did that, it looked like crap, I sent it all off and I thought, hey, wait a minute, uh, I had this problem with the clear. Maybe I need to bump up the pressure, and I went up to 28 psi, and you can see the difference in the fan. Um, huge difference. This is a much nicer looking fan, and if you get up close, you can see there's all these big splatters of paint. Um, so it's just not atomizing properly at 22 with that air cap. So higher pressure, so I put it up to 28. Voila, and it came up perfect. Um, so there is a tiny little bit of trash in here, but man, you, you're hard pressed to see it. Like, you know, that little spot right there. Um, so I tried to be really anal about that second coat, man. <laughs> or second application. I cleaned everything down, sanded it, covered all this up with paper, covered all this up with a fresh piece of paper, wet the floor down, taped every hole I could find of, you know, crap coming in the crap. I tried to be really careful. Um, I also moved this thing. I realized I've been painting right under this garage door opener, which is like probably the dirtiest place in the shop. Duh. Um, so I took the car and scooted it over a little bit. Um, I think that helped as well. Anyway, short story long. Um, I also put uh, some epoxy inside here um, to seal that up well. So that's done. Um, so today we are moving back on to assembly. I'm excited. Um, I sent Russ a text on this guy. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be any kind of sealant in here or anything. Um, I'm going to check the assembly manual to see if I can find anything. Um, it seems like you'd want something there, but I can't remember if there was anything there or not. It's too long ago. So anyway, today uh, we're going to put as much of this stuff back on here as we can um, and uh, see how far we get. Yeah, I don't see anything in here about any kind of sealer, sealant or anything on here, so I'm just going to assume not. All right, we're gonna get started with the accelerator pedal bracket. Um, I bought these guys to go through the firewall because I think they'll look cool. Um, so that's be on the firewall side here. And they don't fit, so I gotta drill those out a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty sexy. In case you didn't notice, I'm going for the black on red theme here as much as I can. So I need to get the pedal mounted to that. I seem to miss, have misplaced one of the spacers that goes between the bracket and the firewall here. So I'll have to find that. Uh, so there's supposed to be four holding it in, not just three. But I went ahead and put the gas pedal on. You can see that's flexing at the top there. That's why you need that one at the top. Anyway, so that's good enough for now. We'll go ahead and put the uh, pedal assembly together. All right, first question for you guys. Um, on the clutch pedal, a little bushing that sticks out about that far. So this is not gonna lock on there tight. I'm gonna try and cinch it down and see if that fixes itself. It might, but uh, we'll see. All right, so yeah, that cinched down okay there. So this is, clutch pedal's pretty stiff, but the brake pedal's a little sloppy, so I don't know if you're supposed to put some shim in here or something, or what? Um, maybe you guys can let me know. Maybe I'm supposed to 
not have I put this washer on here maybe I don't need that I don't know we'll see I'll just leave that you guys let me know what you think all right we have pedals um, this I'm gonna check the e-rod installation manual on the gas pedal I forget I think they make some noises about the distance between these pedals here that seems like a pretty far distance but maybe that's okay All right, one of the things I'm going to try on the brake booster, it came with this guy, um, but this wouldn't seat up against the firewall. So I got one of the factory style ones. Um, this has to come off, but uh, we'll give that a try and see if that fits any better. It may not work at all. We'll see in a minute here. All right, for the clutch master cylinder push rod, um, I bought this little two inch uh, firewall grommet thing um, and I think it'll work just perfectly just kind of snugs itself right into that little hole right there I think that'll work all right so for these little holes I drilled here I put some uh, spray on epoxy paint uh, VHT on a q-tip just dabbed it in there to seal the metal all right here we go so one of the things I did before I started this assembly today is I just bought a crap ton of different bolt assortments. Um, you know, these are tiny little machine screws um, and and uh, nuts. Uh, same thing here. Those weirdo ones. Um, just washers. Uh, one of these um, standard bolt assortments. All stainless. This stuff. Um, just so. Hopefully, as I'm going through this process, like the nuts I had for this were just ancient. Um, I have everything I need to put it together. I don't have to stop and go run over to Home Depot or something and try and find fasteners. So, fingers crossed. Uh, I just wondered about this one here, this bolt. Uh, it might get in way of the in the way of the wiring harness. If so, I may change that one around. Um, I can flip that bolt around the other way because you can't really see it anyway. It'll be hidden. But we'll see. Now let's... Hopefully that uh, clutch master cylinder push rod will go right through there. Again, fingers crossed. I realized I needed to put the clutch um, reservoir on first. This guy gets in the way. It's the same thing, use those little hex head guys. All right, let's get that back on now. All right, you can see how all that went together. So you can see that grommet under there. So that went real nice. Uh, so I'm see continuing the color scheme here, black, red, chrome. Um, Memory serves me correctly. I need to put the windshield washer motor in before I put the master cylinder and everything on. Um, I'm going to do that now. I don't know if I have all the parts for that, though. We'll see. Um, this guy, hopefully, goes right there. Um, and I'm not sure I have all the right bolts and stuff for this. i got to check that out. i go dig around my parts repository. Well, that was nice. These were right where they were supposed to be, and a bag labeled Firewall. You notice these have these weird sealing washers on them. Um, what I do with the, here, this guy. So I painted that black. Okay, continue the theme. All right, let's put that on there and see if we can get the windshield washer. Where is it? Motor on after that. All right, I did manage to find that. It was good. So it needs to come with these special um, bushings, like so. Alright, so we got that guy on there. Alright, let's get that master cylinder and brake booster on there. Alright, there we go. Everything's on there. Um, I'm going to go putz around with the pedals a little bit and see if I can get them roughly lined up where they're supposed to be. Alright, tell me if he's anything wrong with this picture. <laughs> Alright, so what happened is I had this guy on here and with him in place I couldn't get the clutch pedal or the brake pedal rod to line up in the right place so I went back to this guy and I just took this thing and shoved it on without actually looking what I was doing I put it on 90 degrees off that's funny all right let's take it off and do it again there we go that looks better all right so next issue uh, let me get this filmed here um this guy doesn't want to fit over here. Park that there. Okay, 
kind of wants to go on, but not really. I don't know if I need to drill that out or something or what. So I'm going to have to do a little research on that. And then um, for anybody that knows, uh, I don't think there's a clutch stop on this thing. Um, it looks like it's adjusted pretty well. That uh, grommet's a little squeaky. It works. But it's a little squeaky. Um, there, everything seems to work here. The pedal seems to be adjusted pretty well. Um, and this guy, when I get him kind of on there, get him back on there a little bit. Like that. Seems to be okay. Don't know. Um, yeah, I think uh, that covers that. So if anybody has any thoughts on um, the pedals here and any setup or anything, uh, any videos you know of, etc., um, kindly let me know. And uh, let's see. All right, I have a question on the T56 here, uh, as I'm thinking ahead. Uh, this has the GM style adapter. Can't really see that. I'll have a look in the camera to see what that is. Um, and this crappy little bleeder screw here. Um, the clutch master cylinder uh, comes with an AN. I don't know what size that is. AN4 or something? I'm not good with ANs. I know it's not an AN6. Smaller than an AN6. Um, so I need to get this onto the transmission. Um, I don't know what that entails. I don't know if they make an adapter from that the, the style that's on there to an AN or if I have to take those things off um, and if I have to take those things off that means this thing's got to come apart again. Um, again for those in the know if I have to do that uh, can I separate the transmission from the bell housing and do it that way? Um, that would be a lot easier to do I think. Um, might be able to manage that by myself although Pops might be here next weekend I hope. Um, and then as part of that, um, I've been debating whether I should put a bleeder line in this thing or not, because um, I know that thing's useless. Um, so anybody that has any thoughts on that, uh, let me know what you think. Um, and final question, as far as filling this guy with fluids, um, if I put the transmission fluid, is it all going to run out the back here? Because I don't have the, the yoke and the drive shaft or anything for it yet. Um, because I'd like to fill it before I put it back under the car because I won't be able to get to the uh, fill plug easily once it's under the car. I'll have to get a pump or something to do it. Uh, so, yeah, so we're getting close to putting the, the subframe back on the car. Um, and so I'll need to figure all that stuff out. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if that may do it for today. I'm not really sure what else I can do here. Um, I might put these brackets back on the front here. Um, I can start thinking about the battery cables and stuff soon. Um, I might build, I'll put those on today, why not? All right, now I'm just having fun mocking things. Now, any of my second gen buddies out there, this can go on either way. Kind of rationalize that when the hood closed, you'd want it to go that way, but it could go either way, I guess. Let me know, I just threw the leaf guard on there. But, uh, yeah, it looks pretty slick. All this black and white, I'm digging it. Um, I threw these guys in. Um, so we'll be running power cables from here over to the engine. Um, and the question came up in the, the last video where I was asking about these things. Uh, this is going to be fused right at the battery. Um, i got to figure out what size fuse I need there. You know, 300 amps, something, I'm not sure. Um, so the, the cable from the battery all the way through the car up to here into the engine and everything's all protected. Um, so if anything shorts out, it'll blow it back at the battery. Um, and then coming from here, I'm going to be running another power distribution block up here somewhere for um, the uh, cooling fan relays and stuff. And that I haven't figured that out what that's going to be yet. Um, but I'll want to put a, a circuit breaker or a fuse on that because that'll be um, a much lighter gauge. So this is... Um, uh, zero gauge, I forget, um, from the battery to here, and I'm running two gauge from here to the to the engine. From here up, it'll probably be eight, ten, I don't know, depending. I only need 
you know, 40, 40 amps or something, whatever the, the fans are going to need. Uh, so I, if you try and protect that with a 300 amp fuse, of course, it's not going to do any good. The wire will burn up first. So I need another level of protection from here on out. Yeah. All right, I think that's going to do it for the day. Um, it's Memorial Day weekend, so I'll probably be back out here Sunday, maybe Monday. It's going to be bloody hot from what I understand, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, anybody have any feedback on anything you saw here? I'm going to plug those, obviously. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, I'll continue on this. I'll probably start thinking about the lines next, um, or I might move on to the vintage air, one of the two. We'll see. Anyway, uh, have a good one, everybody. Uh, take care, and we will catch you on the next one. Thank you.